Good evening, my friends. Thank you for joining us. One more session of Kardec after lunch. I apologize for being so close to dinner time, actually, but sometimes it's hard to keep up with the schedule. Um, I also changed the uh, description of the video so you can see now. Sorry, this way right here. You can see now it has a little more uh, better description of why we do it in the way we do it. And also, uh, why we do it, why is it Kardec after lunch? So, uh, just to explain, and no, uh, on the video, we do it simply, and we do it without prior preparation to exemplify how easy it is to, for any one of you watching us, how easy it is to start or to be a little more active in your own spiritism study. Basically, all you need is the book. And to be honest, no, you don't even need the book. You can go to kardakpedia.com and read it that way. However, if you do it you know, with at kardakpedia.com, I believe, no, don't quote me on it, I don't think you can save your progress. You cannot you know, put a bookmark unless you, you know, of course, write it down somewhere. But uh, Kardakpedia uh, also has an app that you can download to your phone. However, I also not aware if it is, uh, gives you the ability to save uh, your progress. So, but anywho, so the idea is it is not that hard. Just need a little bit of willpower, right? Small, but constant steps. It's all that is necessary for you to go from point A to point B. It doesn't matter if it's a thousand mile journey, start with the first step, right? Now also we do it, or we try to do it, and I apologize for today's uh, being remiss on it, but we try to do it during the day. And the reason is not only I'm able to, so why not, but also because, think it with me here, most, if not all, of the spiritist sessions, the study sessions that you may be able to attend at your local spiritist society or elsewhere, 99% of them, if not 100% of them, are held after working hours, right? Now, consider that uh, you may be uh, exposed to that piece of knowledge for the first time or even if it's just a refreshed knowledge, but you haven't had, I don't say the opportunity, but the, the conscience or the, let's say, the, the idea to put it into practice. Oh, thank you, Celso. Celso has been with us uh, many, many times uh, supporting our channel. So I really appreciate Celso all you have done. Uh, know that in the future, near future, I will actually send you a request for feedback because we'd love to hear from you. I would like to be able to benefit those who are listening. So, but so we do it during the day. Uh, and we, we will try our best to do it close as possible to lunchtime. So if you at work or at home during your daily routine and you happen to have the chance to listen to us live, interact, uh, or even if you don't have the chance to do those things, but as you expose to that little piece of knowledge, just 15 minutes of it, but after the video, you may very likely, if you really intend to put that knowledge into practice, you may be given the opportunity by God to do so, right? And it could be at your workplace, you know, towards your co-workers, because as you know, spiritism is not a very uh, diffused, uh, very spread or very recognized here in the United States. So <clears throat> most, I imagine, of your co-workers may not know that you are a spiritist. They also may not know what a spiritist is and what we believe and 
therefore, would not have an expectation of our behavior or um, or beliefs or you know, uh, how we conduct ourselves. So most of us, what are we? We are part-time spiritists. We are spiritists at the center of the society during study groups, during conferences, during meetings. But many of us consider that we are not a spiritist during your daily routine at your workplace, right? Not, not saying that it happens with all of us, but I suspect that it does happen with many of us. So by giving the opportunity to either just listen to, watch our program, or even comment, interact live, you now have the chance to not just study a little bit of Kardec during the day, but hopefully, God willing, you'll be able to practice spiritist, oh, sorry, spiritism. Because it's easy being a spiritist in the society amongst other spiritists. It's a whole other thing to be a spiritist in the middle of the world. But that's exactly where we're going to be able to make some progress, right? Because we can only make progress if we let go our former self. And we can only let go our former self. Oh, hello, Eli. Eli, sorry. Thank you for joining us. And hopefully it's just the first time of many to come. So I appreciate you uh, watching us live and for your support. Um, some of what I covered already, uh, feel free to uh, watch it again. But <clears throat> uh, so the idea is we do those sessions, we do them quick, we do them during the day. So you can see how easy it is to replicate. And yeah, hopefully you'll be able to use that knowledge during your workday and benefit from that chance and that effort that you took to reorient your thoughts, your words, and your actions. But uh, lately, I've had the blast opportunity to interact with many uh, uh, members of the Spiritist Society, uh, some renowned uh, members at the Spiritist Society of Virginia and the Spiritist Society of DC. And those videos are available, the lectures uh, and those amazing time amazing it's very very nice to uh, be able to take part in english uh, lectures and study sessions so let's uh, actually start what we're here for uh, sorry for eating up like half of our time but so we're going to be reading from the medium's book if you happen to have this edition right here you can welcome to open it up on page 115 if you don't you can go to kardakpedia.com and <clears throat> You can go to chapter four, explanation of the physical manifestations. We are on increase and decrease in the weight of objects. Sorry, it's our cat Nina acting up. Hopefully she won't eat that. Number 81. We alluded earlier to the possible increasing of an object's weight, which is a phenomenon that it has in fact been produced at times and about which there is nothing any more abnormal than the resistance of the bell glass caused by atmospheric pressure. Under the influence of certain mediums, we have seen very light objects offer the same sort of resistance and then suddenly yield, no eff uh, sorry, yield to very little effort. With the bell glass experiment, the object in reality weighs no more or less than it normally does. It just seems heavier because of the outside cause acting upon it. Um, I suggest, I have told this before, many times when we go into a passage in a text, we mention uh, a specific um, word or historical figure or place or 
occasion that is particular to Europe of the middle of the 19th century, I suggest you do take your time to look it up because the act of looking it up will increase your chances of retention of this knowledge that we're covering. If I'm not mistaken, this idea of this experiment with a bell glass means it's a physical experiment where you have uh, as like a, jar, a jar, a glass jar, turned upside down uh, onto a flat surface, and you can uh, remove the air from the inside of the glass. Therefore, you know, if the seal is, is good, be able to stick that glass you know, to the table, and therefore you'll be unable to move it, right? You'll be unable to remove it from contact to the table. And if you inject air back into it, at least you know, to the amount of uh, the equal of atmospheric pressure, uh, then only the weight of the glass is what's uh, acting upon it, right? Now, if you inject even more air into it, you can even kind of force it to lightly levitate or uh, will be suspended under a very thin, um, let's say, blanket of air. Uh, much in the same way, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, in the United States, we have what we call a, uh, air hockey tables. Uh, so basically, it's just a table with a whole bunch of small uh, holes in it where air is passed, is pushed up through it, and it enables a little puck to levitate, float. So uh, the same thing probably happens with the table. It continues to maintain its intrinsic weight since its mass has not been increased, but an outside force opposes its movement. The cause may be in the surrounding fluids that penetrate it, just as the bell glass cause is the atmospheric pressure. Perform the bell glass experiment in front of an unlearned peasant and he will not understand that the acting agent is actually the air that he cannot see. It would be very easy to persuade him that it was the devil's work, right? Because for, to those who do not know how certain thing operates, right, they might as well be, and that depends on the volition of the person, or the perspective of the interpretation, it could very well be a divine force or it could be a diabolical source. Now, of course, we in spiritism know better, but basically is uh, the idea that ignorance intellectually, morally, spiritually could lead to a vast amount of misinterpretations as to how something works, how it operates, um, how it's supposed to be conducted, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How can we decrease our level of ignorance? Study. There is no other method. No one can inject knowledge into you against your will. And knowledge, it's only gained through effort. There is no other way. Continue. One could perhaps think that since the fluid is imponderable, then its accumulation could not increase an object's weight. Agreed. However, notice that if we had employed the word accumulation, it is to make a comparison and not to identify the fluid with the air. Yes, it may be imponderable. Nevertheless, there is nothing to prove that it is. Its essential nature, it's unknown to us, and we are far from knowing about all of its properties. Before knowing about the weight of air, no one would have suspected such an effect to be possible. Electricity is also classified among the imponderable fluids. Nevertheless, an object can be held down by an electric current, and it will strongly resist whoever attempts to lift it. In this case, actually, he's describing a magnetic uh, effect. But remember, this was written in the middle of the 19th century. 
it does appears to have become heavier, but simply because of the fact that there is no support to be seen. It would be illogical to conclude that there is none. Hence, a spirit may possess means of leverage unknown to us. Nature proves to us every day that, that it cannot be limited to the testimony of our senses, <clears throat> which is a very good explanation. It completely confirmed because imagine back in the day where science was completely uh, sorry i'm going to continue going here because i'm in the middle of the, the topic but uh, i'm going to mark here where we left off but imagine back in the day where science was completely restricted to our senses where there was no instrumentation that could measure you know um physical quantities that we know nowadays uh by default of course science could not go could not go very far because we're very limited to our senses to this day of course our interaction with the spirits for example it's limited not just to our senses but uh, to our in intelligence and our belief so let's do what is our responsibility to progress and to try to become better little by little be a better person today than we were than we were yesterday okay until next time godspeed to all